Hello everyone, Matthew McConaughey here. In 1996, I played Jake Brigant in the film version of John Grisham's A Time to Kill, directed by the now late Joel Schumacher. Now there's another longer story for another time about how exactly I got the gig, but I will tell you this, John Grisham had to approve me for the role of Jake Brigant, which he thankfully did. Which leads me to now thank the someone John told me I really needed to thank back then, his wife, Renee. <laughs> Thank you, Renee. It was an incredible opportunity to step into yours and Jake's shoes, John, and it was more than a thrill of a lifetime for me. It was a success. That without, I would not be where I am today. So, thank you. Today, I'd like to read you a small excerpt from Grisham's new Jake Brigance novel, A Time for Mercy, which comes out on October the 13th. The book is a sequel to A Time to Kill and Sycamore Row, and I must say, I'm Happy to be back in Jake's world again, so here goes. Monday, August 6. Jake slept in short little naps, interrupted by long stretches of wide-eyed worries about all the things that could go wrong. His dream was to become a great trial lawyer, but as always, on the first morning, he asked himself, why would anyone want the stress? In the courtroom and in front of the jury, a lawyer has at least 10 things on his mind, all crucial. He must concentrate on the witness, either his or an opponent's, and hear every word of the testimony. Should he object, and why? Has he covered all the facts? Are the jurors listening, and if so, do they believe the witness? Do they even like the witness? And if they're not paying attention, is this beneficial or not? He must observe every move made by his opponent and predict where he is going. What is his strategy? Has he changed in mid-course, or is he laying a trap? And the judge? Was he on the top of his game? The final summation was often the most dramatic moment, but preparing it ahead of time was difficult because the witnesses had not yet been heard. He'd won the Haley acquittal with a stunning closing argument. Could he do it again? What magic words or phrases could he conjure up to save his client? This time. Thank you, John, for having me. Thanks for approving me in 96. Thank you for being the master of the courtroom drama. In the meantime and all times, just keep living.